Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will show you how to create a realistic flight plan to enhance your virtual flying experience in any flight simulator. Let us begin. In order to create a realistic flight plan, we will be using a number of freeware tools and websites. If you already know your departure and arrival airports, you may skip to the next section in the video using the video timeline available in the description of the video. In order to create a realistic flight plan using real-world data, the first thing we're going to do is to download this freeware application, Random Flight Database. Link to it is provided in the description section of the video. I have covered this application in the past on the channel, so this is not going to be a tutorial or a showcase of the application, but I am going to show you a quick overview of all the features available to you to create your first flight plan. After you have successfully downloaded and installed RFD, click on the Random Flight Database. The main interface of Random Flight Database provides you with several options to search for real-world flights. You can go as specific as selecting the airline, the aircraft, the departure arrival airport, the date of the flight, as well as the number of routes, and you can also select the minimum and the maximum flight time for each flight. RFD will then return the results to match the criteria that you have set. For the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to be using Southwest as the airlines and Boston International as the departure airport. I'm going to select a maximum number of five real-world flights for RFD to generate. Let's go ahead and click on the Generate button. As you can see, RFD has returned five real-world flights flown by Southwest Airlines departing from Boston International. You have the time as well as the flight number, the registration number of the aircraft, and the day of the flight. Next, we are going to highlight and select the flight of choice. In this case, we are going to be flying Southwest 388 on a Boeing 737-800. And as you can see, the registration number is November 8613 Kilo, and the day is Monday. Next, we are going to load this real-world flight data from FlightAware using the RFD interface by clicking on this icon here. The next step is to also click on the SimBrief icon to export this particular flight plan to SimBrief. FlightAware is now displaying a number of real-world Southwest flights originating from Boston Logan to Chicago Midway. From the list, what we want to look for is a Southwest flight that has the same equipment as our flight plan. In our case, the 737-800. And you want to make sure that you select a flight that has already arrived today. The reason why you want to do this is you will need the departure gate and the arrival gate at your departure and destination airports in order to create that realistic experience. So we are going to click on Southwest 422. As you can see, we now have the full details of flight Southwest 422 service from Boston Logan International to Chicago Midway. Notice that we have the actual gate number of the Southwest flight departing from gate Bravo 31 Alpha and arriving into Chicago Midway at gate Bravo 12. From the flight data table, we're going to take notice of the altitude filed for this flight, which is in this case 34,000 feet, and the real world route flown by Southwest 422, which is right here. Now, we are going to go to the SimBrief plan and edit a few information to match whatever we see in FlightAware. We are now ready to transfer the FlightAware information into our SimBrief plan. 
The first thing we're going to do is we're going to ensure we have the correct airline, which is Southwest Airline, flight number 422, departing Boston Logan International, arriving into Chicago Midway. The alternate air, airport is, uh, I believe this is Dallas-Fort Worth, and the departure time is something you can also change to match the flight-aware um, data but by doing so, you have to remember to change the time in the sim to match the departure time that you enter here. Obviously, the equipment is a 737-800. We have the registration number of the aircraft. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here and make sure that we enter the correct filed altitude from our flight aware information. As you can see here, the filed altitude is 34,000 feet. So we are going to enter flight level 340 by typing the letter F and then 340. Now we have the correct altitude and we are going to select one of the real world routes that Simbrief is suggesting. Now we can actually consult our, our flight data in the Flight Aware website and we can see that we are uh, departing from the Hilton 6 and arriving uh, at the Pong 5 uh, arrival into uh, Chicago Midway. And we have the exact flight plan right here, which is the first one here, uh, which is selected by default by Simbrief. Now we have all the required data to create our realistic flight plan as it appears on FlightAware. We're gonna go ahead and click on Generate Flight we have now successfully created a flight plan that exactly matches this flight aware record for Southwest 422. So the last step is now to position our aircraft at Boston Logan International at gate Bravo 31 Alpha. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, I have the 737-800 selected as the aircraft. The departure airport is Boston Logan International Airport, and we're gonna look for Bravo 31 Alpha, which is right here. We're gonna set this as the departure, and we're gonna say fly. As you can see now, we have this Southwest Boeing 738 at stand Bravo 31 Alpha, ready for a real world Southwest operation from Boston Logan International. One last tip, for enhanced real-world operations in a flight sim is upon arrival at your destination airport. As you can see here, we are arriving at gate Bravo 12 at Chicago Midway. In order to navigate to this gate, I highly recommend that you use an updated airport chart. In my case, I use Navigraph. You can also use GSX Pro and it will guide you to that specific spot if it is not occupied by another aircraft. Well, folks, this brings us to the conclusion of this video. I hope that you have found it useful and insightful. If you have any questions, as usual, please do post them in the comment section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.